Hey guys, Chris here from ASM Scholarships and today we're going to learn how are athletic scholarships funded. First, play the reel. Some fantastic opportunities, not only for rugby players in South Africa, but for athletes globally. And we're going to help you all along that road of uh, becoming a student athlete in the United States. I this ASM is such an amazing company to be working with. They've got me so many opportunities. If you have a dream, say it out loud so someone can help you like ASM. Hey guys, welcome back. So, you're probably wondering, where does all this money come from? How do these universities get so much funds to pay for your scholarship? And why does it even matter? Well, it matters because the less money these schools receive, the less they can give out scholarships. So, you're probably wondering which schools give out the most scholarships, which ones don't. The schools that tend to get more funds in are the ones that have the bigger scholarships and more sports normally available in their university. And that's why it's important, because the bigger schools normally will have more money, but however, even the small schools can still raise a lot of capital, and I'll show you how they can do that. It means their program can still be very competitive. So, the first way that pretty much every university makes their, their funds is through ticket sales. So I'm gonna put tickets. Like any any teams, you know, any professional teams, any any clubs, people coming to watch your games, that obviously raises a lot of funds. But some sports, you know, that are not as in high demand produce less income than ticket sales, but the big ones like American football, basketball, they bring in millions of dollars just through ticket sales and, and, and also, you know, food sales at those events. So that's one way the universities will, will, will raise funds. The second way is merchandise. So like, I'll just put merch. Like, like any, any professional team as well, they'll sell clothing, people who support that university will buy those clothing. So merchandise is again, something the university can offer. Uh, and the more, you know, the, the more fans they have, the more merchandise they will sell. So that's another good revenue stream uh, for these universities. And the next one's donations, or we call them booster parents. Booster parents. So donations, booster parents, a lot of like, for example, Tiger Woods, uh, Michael Jordan, it's been rumored that they've given as much as $20 million to their universities. Tiger obviously going to Stanford, Michael J MJ, Michael Jordan going to North Carolina. They just pump money in. Even though they don't go there anymore, it's their way of giving back to the school that helped them in their careers to kind of get started. And again, it's not just them, a lot of parents do it, a lot of athletes do it after university. So even just fans of the schools will, will give funds to the to school so they can keep investing in their programs on facility upgrades, equipment, whatever it is, training, and recruiting the best coaches to come in. This is actually one of the biggest ones, they actually ways they produce income for the school. So another, another big sort of the way school can make money, but the number one biggest by a mile for raising funds university is obviously the TV commercial rights. So TV rights. Now any, put that in red because it's the biggest one. Now any university uh, that has a football team, American, so American football team, a basketball team, those sports get the biggest funds as much as three to four billion dollars a year that comes in for those rights to show that on ESPN, CBS, all the major networks here in the US will be showing college sports and they're showing mainly basketball and football. However, since recently, golf, tennis, hockey, a bunch of sports, soccer, all now on the mainstream TV network. So what the universities have done with the NCAA is packaged it into a deal where they can basically show all the sports and it's amazing to see you know, in, in May when a lot of the national championships are on, you can just tune on ESPN or CBS and you can see it there live. So pretty cool stuff. So that's kind of a deal that the NCAA do with the university to, to sell these rights. Now what happens is this then all gets funneled down to the university. So the university, the university makes all this stuff direct. So the bigger the university is, the more funds they'll get, the, more, the better they, they do here, it's directly income going to university. The NCAA will give a proportionate percentage of these big commercial TV rights to the universities for them to, to invest in their programs and, and do what the, the heck they like with it, to be honest. Now the university, what they'll do then after that is they will give a percentage of these rights to the athletic department, the AD. So the athletic director has all the funds come in and it's pretty much their job then to distribute that income out to the teams, to the news and their programs. Now, so that will get them sent out to the teams. Now, obviously, if a school's known for having a better basketball team, they'll probably get more of the funds. If it's a football program, they'll probably get more of the funds, but it's, it's up to the AD director to distribute that out. So they can, you know, and some schools have more of a goal to be better at soccer or tennis, so they might get more. But whatever their, 
the mission of the school is, what they're trying to do with their sports program, that's how the AD is going to distribute that, that wealth out. Now, when the coach gets that income from that AD, it's up to the coach then to spend those dollars, and this way it comes to you. They can normally they're going to spend a percentage of it. So let's say they raise a million dollars, they might spend half a million dollars on giving out on scholarships. So maybe some people go for rides, partials, up to coach what to do at that point. Or he might then spend the others a half a million dollars on equipment, travel with the team, coaching, going to places and playing more events. It's really up to coach and how he budgets that. Now, why is this important to you? Because these budgets change every single year. Now, what we've seen recently over the last year, budgets have been squeezed, especially with the world economy and the COVID situation. So it's not as you know big as it used to be, but the big programs still have big funds. But that does mean if you want to get into these universities, the longer you leave this process, more likely coaches are going to have a shorter budget. Now these budgets do, again, every year get recycled and they get refilled, but some years they can be bigger, some they can be smaller. So if you basically want to play college sports and you're delaying this process, you shouldn't because the quicker you can get in this process for coaches to know about you, the quicker you'll have the chance to get allocated those funds that have distributed down the kind of funnel to coach. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been useful to kind of give you some insight on how universities make money and then basically how coach gets it so you can give you a scholarship. Take care, guys. And if you like this video, please give us a like. It is free. It does help us in the algorithm. Take care. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.